Hey, how are you doing? Um, thought I'd make this video. This is mostly for people who are thinking about getting into the post office or just starting. I uh, thought I'd talk about the mail case because this is something um, that is important when you first start out and it might be not be something that you're familiar with. Okay, so here we go. Um, oops, all right. So uh, the mail case, so what's the basic, basic purpose of it? So the basic purpose is to put the mail in route order. So you get some mail that's not in order. Um, you get buckets of this stuff and <laughs> you put it where it belongs. So if it's gonna get delivered first, you put it in the, you put it in the, the slot with the first address, you know? Um, that's what you do. It's also used to marry your combined mail that goes to the same address. So you're going to have different streams of mail. You'll have letters, you'll have magazines, you'll have newspapers, and some of those things will all go to the same address. So the mail case allows you to do that, to put those things together. You put all your, mag your newspapers in, then you put all your magazines in. Some people decide to put all their letters in. And then what you have is you have all the things together for that address. Now, some of the things, like I take my letters on the side because the letters are already in order. There are some that aren't, those I'll put in the case, but you get some of these trays called DPS of letters that are in order. Some carriers choose to put them together at their case so that when they leave, they can pull it all down into whatever they're gonna carry it in a tray or whatever. When they get to the address, they can just grab everything for that mailbox and put it in right away. Me and some other people too, I'll grab the magazines and newspapers and I'll grab, I'll flip through the mail and then I'll put it together at the box. So you can do some of that on the street, but a lot of that can get done at the case as well. Another purpose for the case is to communicate changes in mail service. So um, there's a number of different ways to do that. There can just be little notes on the mail case, um, but you could also, you'll often see these sticks. Well, sometimes they'll use stickers too, but these sticks, they'll slide it in where the, the mail case into the slot for the address. And there's different colors for different things. This is a red one. That means that the house is vacant. There's no one living there. They have blue and green ones for forward. So somebody moved out or the entire family moved out. Um, and then they have yellow ones for temporary holds, which means that um, you know, somebody went on vacation for a few days or a week. <laughs> so you're gonna hold their mail. And there are also pink ones. The pink ones mean that it's temporarily vacant. So somebody who lives in the state for like half the year, something like that, the house will be vacant for a long period of time, not just a few weeks, like with the yellow stick, okay? It's not just a temporary hold. They're gone for a long period of time, okay? So those sticks let you know that um, when people are on hold, you'll have these cards um, by your case as well. So they'll have shelves or buckets or something to put in the mail for people who are holding, okay? And uh, you'll set this card by it. You'll, it'll have the address, um, when it will be delivered, how it will be delivered, if you're gonna drop it off or if they're gonna pick it up, that sort of thing. So these will be at the case as well, okay? So again, those are the three main purposes for the case. It does have other uses too. Um, you can use it to put your packages in order. So a lot of carriers, what they'll do is they'll, the larger packages, they'll push them over to the cart. And then what they'll do is they'll um, look at the address on the box and then they'll place a parcel marker in the mail slot, okay? And then they'll either put it on a certain part, spot in the cart, like, okay, all my ones go here, all my twos go here, that sort of thing. Or they'll put a mark right on the, right on the box. Um, there's another video on this website by somebody else made called the sunshine method of parcel marking where they take the box and on the box, they'll write a letter and a number letting you know where on the case it is and then put a tick mark to let you know where in the row it is. So that's another way you can use the case to put packed parcels in order. Now the small parcels, as you can see from this picture, I put my small parcels in with my, in with my flats, okay? So I put them in the case right along with the magazines and catalogs and newspapers. So when I pull down, it's all together. Um, you can also, after you take all the magazines out and put them in your trays that you could take to your car, you can then 
put all your packages in and use it to put it in order. But that is, an, that is a use for it, putting packages in order. And another way, thing that you can use the case for is to learn the mail route itself. <laughs> um, there are little strips that have all the addresses on them. And in very small letters, it has the name of the streets. So what I will do, okay, there you can see some packages in order. What I will do is I will uh, make these sheets. I'll just take a piece of notebook paper and I'll go along row one and I'll just write down, write down every single street name in that row, okay? It's written small, but I can just kind of go along and look. It takes about five minutes to get all of those written down. But then I'll have a sheet of paper like this. This piece of paper, it has all of the street names in the first row and all of the street names in the second row. And then on the bottom, all of the street names in the third row, all in order. On the back side, I've got the bottom three rows. So that is that can be useful. Again, learning the route. Um, take the time to study the case. Maybe, maybe like I do, write down the names of the streets. That way you will know them <laughs> and you'll know where you're going when you're out on the street. Okay. Um, common components. So you have the shelves themselves, which you saw pictures of before. And then on the shelves, you have these little dividers that keep the addresses separate. Now, each address might have its own divider. Sometimes you'll have two addresses squeezed between the dividers. Sometimes you'll have four, even more, you know, it might be an apartment building all <laughs> in one section with just dividers. Okay, it just depends on how that carrier uh, wants to arrange things. Um, and then you have the case labels, which are these strips of cardboard with all the addresses on them. Again, the street names, you can see right here, this little tiny thing <laughs> is a street name, very small, the numbers are bigger. Very small. And sometimes it'll have like the name of the people uh, printed on it as well. The name at, at that address. So like the Smiths or the Joneses. Um, and then there'll also be a desk um, that one of the cases sits on, usually the center one. And uh, you have these coffins. So, or elephant ears they're called. They can be uh, fiberglass like this one, or they can be um, metal. And they used to use these to measure flats. So they would stack up the magazines here and they could say like how many inches of uh, magazines and catalogs you got that day. They would measure it and they'd have, the clerks would have to report it. Um, in my office, we don't do that anymore, but it might be different in your district. And then uh, you also have some sh shelves or trays for holds, either off to the side or maybe underneath, uh, someplace to keep that held mail. Okay, so that's the common components. Um, and then uh, this brings me to this, uh, how, is the, how is it laid out? So there's two main ways that a case is laid out. Usually it'll be three shelving units like this, but not always. Sometimes, sometimes it will be um, more than that, <laughs> okay? Sometimes you'll have four shelving units. Sometimes you'll only have two. Uh, usually the first box will be up here and the last box will be down here. But I have been in some offices where the first address is down at the bottom, okay? Just kind of depends, you know? So this is how they travel. So a bookcase, we'll start here. This is the first address, and then you'll continue on with different addresses until the end of that row, okay? Once you get to the end of that row, you go down to the second row, and go across, and then the third row, and the fourth row, and the fifth row, and the sixth row, if they have a sixth row, you know. And then once you get to the bottom of that, the end of that sixth row, then you go up to the top of the next case and go across, and then go across the second row of that case, and the third row, and the fourth row and so on, and then you get over here to the last one, and you start at the top and go down. So that is bookcase method. So you finish, this is the first third of your route right here, okay? And then this is the second third of your route. And then this case is the last, the end of your route. Okay, that's the way bookcase is set up. Now carousel is different. Carousel starts, at the, starts in the same spot, but once you get to the end of that first row, what you do is instead of going down, you move, you stay on the top row, 
put in the next case. And then you go over to the next case. And then once you get to the end of that, then you go down to the second row. Once you get to the end of that row, move on to the second row in the next case and so on. So that's the difference between bookcase and carousel. Which one's better? Hard to say. <laughs> it's really preference. I like carousel because I like the idea of, okay, I finished the top row, now I'm doing the second row. But depending on how, you know, if you put in DPS, if you put in all your letters, it can be a lot of turning. <laughs> because, you know, with bookcase, if you've got a stack of things that are in all in order, uh, you get to stay at this case for a long time before you turn your body into this case. So it's kind of a preference. Um, what do you like the best? Okay. All right, moving on. So some final thoughts. Um, when I first started, I was a little confused with the case. It took me a long time to learn it. And I learned now that I think you really should study it. Um, take the time to write down the street names. It's a good idea because it'll help you out on the route and it'll get you it'll help you be faster casing. When I first started, I would spend like almost five hours <laughs> casing things, you know, just putting things in that case. Sometimes my eyes would start getting fuzzy because I got tired of looking at these little addresses. So casing is important. Learning how to do it quickly is important. So learn that case. It's going to help you. It's going to pay dividends in the end, right? Um, another thing, okay. Uh, don't worry about making your case beautiful, okay? <laughs> I used to have everything. I used to think, you know, I used to spend time, like I'd put a magazine in there, it'd be crooked, I'd be like straightening it out. And it's like, you don't have to do that because it's not how it looks in the case, okay? The case is just a tool to help you put things in order, to help you put things together. You are gonna take it out of the case and put it in buckets or trays or something and put it in your car, right? So that's the end result. So don't spend too much time with your case fussing with things, okay? Get them where they are, fix it when you're pulling down, because that's what's important. What's important is that it gets in the mail mailbox. It's not important how pretty your case looks. It took me a while to figure that out. Okay, um, good luck to you. Let me know if you have any questions and I would be happy to help you with that, okay? All right, have a good day.